Nicholas, uh, praise to talk. Can I just uh, ask a question which uh, is, I'm sure, will come as meat and drink to a, an objectivist? Uh, is, is that one of the problems with people's understanding about what's happened in the financial markets over the last 18 months, two years, is the fact that amongst, even amongst the supposedly intelligent members of the public is the ability to make abstractions and to understand cause and effect. So your point about central banks pumping the world full of cheap money, not just the Federal Reserve or the Bank of England or the Bank of Japan, which has had virtually no interest rates at all for the last 10 years, is that most people can't work out the connections. And it's not because they're stupid, it's because the narrative, to want to use a terrible new labor expression, is that we are seeing the demise of unregulated capitalism. And of course, anybody who works in financial markets will know that there's nothing unregulated about it at all. You've got Starlings, obviously, you've got the European Union, you've got God knows how many regulations. Anyone who's worked in banks will tell you how regulated it is. So how does, um, how do you think that the, that, that the, that, that the, your, the correct interpretation of events can be more effectively put across? Because if you open any mainstream newspaper or magazine or TV channel, you, 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 the same old message is, we are seeing the demise of unregulated capitalism. It's complete rubbish, but unfortunately it's very difficult to, and no one seems to be, or very few people, apart from yourselves and a few others, seem to be trying to counteract it. I, absolutely, and, and I think the way to counteract it is to speak up. And I think the first thing that we, you know, before we get to any of the more complex issues, before we get to the moral issues or anything like that, the first thing we have to make, the first claim we have to make, is there is no such thing as unregulated capitalism. There is no such thing. This cannot be a failure of capitalism because capitalism isn't out there. The left has taken the word capitalism. I mean, it used to be that everybody was for capitalism. Why? Because it was this mixed economy. You could have a little bit more socialism, a little bit less socialism. But if you accepted this mixed economy as capitalism, then nobody's against it. Everybody's for it, right? Because nobody's for pure socialism. And if the mixed economy is capitalism, Clinton was a capitalist, Obama would say he's pro-capitalism. What we need is to capture what capitalism really means. So what I try to do when I go on television, when I write something is first, this is what capitalism is. Capitalism means unregulated free markets. Now, how many of you think our markets are unregulated? Nobody even, nobody really thinks that. But unless it's pointed out to them, they, their mind doesn't go there. Because you're right, the narrative is, to use that horrible word, but the narrative is, that no, this is how you're supposed to think about these things. What we need to do is change the narrative. We need to start asking questions, and you can do it by just asking questions. Where is this unregulated capitalism? Where are these unregulated banks? Do you realize how many lines of regulation there are in the, in the US you know, bank regulation bills that every aspect of a bank's functioning is regulated, every aspect. You know, from the fact that in the US we have deposit insurance, now, of course, you in the UK have unlimited deposit insurance. So, I, we don't care where we put our money, which bank we put our money, because the government guarantees it all, so we don't have to think about who's safe and who's not. Make us all brain dead right off the bat. Of course, that creates huge moral hazard on the part of the bankers. The bankers, as they get into more financial distress, have a great incentive to take on more and more risk, because it's not their capital, it's not their money anymore, it's depositors, and the depositors don't care because they come and guarantee it. It's a, it's a really interesting phenomenon in the U.S. that you know, I noticed back in the 80s. Uh, in the 80s, the U.S. went through the SNL crisis, the saving and loan crisis, where these S S saving and loans were going bankrupt left and right. And what was fascinating is that the Wall Street Journal used to publish a little chart, it, which was which SNLs around the country were offering the highest rates on accounts, on checking accounts, saving accounts, CDs, money markets. And um, they would see, of course, People want high returns. People would send them huge quantities of money because they were offering high returns. Of course, that chart was predictive, almost at 100% of which banks were going to go bankrupt. <laughs> Within six months, most of the ones on this chart were bankrupt. So why were people sending the money to a bankrupt institution in the Virgin Bankruptcy? Because we don't care because it's all guaranteed by the government. Now, what do you think those bankers were doing when they got this money that they, in those days, they were paying 10, 12% on some of the money? Well, they had to now invest it in ventures that they expected to get 15, 20, 25% on. Now, what kind of ventures get those kind of returns? Risky. Well, very, very risky. I call it, they were basically buying lottery tickets with the money. <laughs> and once in a while, one of these banks won the lottery, and they're the survivors. Most of them lost the money. And that's why most SNLs went out of existence during the 1980s and early 90s. But the mechanism to make that happen is created by them. So just pointing out all these little regulatory aspects, what kind of loans bank can make, 
you know, the, the very fact that the Bank of England and the Federal Reserve set the interest rates. Uh, all of those, we just need to keep, keep conveying this message. What failed is not capitalism. What failed is not capitalism. Even if you don't make the positive point about what really caused the crisis is, is a central bank, just enough to get, get the narrative changed. And it's going to take a lot of work because we're outnumbered. You know, we just are. They're, they're, and, and unfortunately, I've seen so many free market economists crumble with this crisis, you know, uh, ch suddenly change their stripes or, or turn the other way. I happen to think that uh, a big part of that is this moral uncomfortableness to it, with, with the idea of, of, of capitalism that causes people to switch very quickly. 